Madam Deputy Speaker, after all the delays, all the slogans, all the big promises, is this it? Is this really it? The sum total of ambition for our proud order, coastal and industrial order, towns, our order, villages and our order. great cities. The Secretary of State was heard with respect. Yeah. I don't expect the Shadow Secretary of State to be shouted at. Lisa Nand. Madam Deputy Speaker, they don't disrespect us when they chunter and cheer. They disrespect the people of this country. Seriously, is this it? The sum total of our ambition for our coastal and industrial towns, our villages and our great cities, is a history lesson on the rise of the Roman Empire. A minister scurrying around Whitehall shuffling the deck chairs, cobbling together a shopping list of recycled policies and fiddling the figures. Is this really it? For some of us, Madam Deputy Speaker, this is personal. We've lived these failures every single day. We've watched good jobs go, our high streets boarded up, young people who have to get out to get on. He talks about Berry FC. My stepdad was a lifelong supporter of Berry FC, a regular at Gig Lane. His last words to my stepbrother before he died were, what's the score? If he were alive today, he would never forgive them for standing aside while this asset at the centre of Berry's community was allowed to collapse. Oh, Madam right. Deputy Speaker, this system is completely broken and he's given us more of the same. This was meant to be the Prime Minister's defining mission of government. I'm not surprised he was too embarrassed to come here today and to defend it himself. It's so bad that even the Secretary of State has privately been saying that it's rubbish. They tell us to wait till 2030, but where have they been for the last 12 years? And I, well, I'll tell them where. In Whitehall, turbocharging the decline of our communities, cutting off choices and chances for a generation of young people. Well, he talks about 12 missions. This is 12 admissions of failure. Let's take one of them. Only two-thirds of children leave primary school with the basic skills to get on. Forgive me if I've missed something, but wasn't he the education secretary right. for four years? What about this? They want to tackle crime. But on their watch, fewer than one in ten crimes are solved, and nearly all rapes go unprosecuted. Anyone would think, listening to this, that he wasn't in charge of the Justice Department. This is a government in free form, out of ideas, out of energy, recycled, watered down ambitions, and none of it is new. In fact, some of it is so old that one of the better announcements that caught my eye was actually made in 2008 by Gordon Brown and has been running ever since. Across our hometowns, we have seen good jobs disappear and far too many young people that have to get out to get on. This does nothing to address that. He talks about a Medici-style renaissance, but can't he see what is happening? in front of his eyes. Our high streets are struggling because the local economy is struggling. People don't have money to spend in our shops, our businesses, our high streets, and they're about to hike up their taxes. This does nothing to address it. What we needed was a plan to connect our towns and villages to jobs, to opportunities, to our family and to our <laughs> friends. But they've halved the funding for buses, they've scrapped the rail promises to the north, and where is the digital Britain, we were promised. Madam Deputy Speaker, we don't need to look to Rome, Jericho or Renaissance Florence for inspiration, because in Preston, Wigan and Grimsby, people are delivering real change for themselves, not because of their government, but despite it. Imagine what we could do if they would get out of the way and give us back the power that we demand to make decisions for ourselves. Well, she laughs. They do laugh. They've been laughing at us for years, and here it goes again. It's absurd that we have to go cap in hand to Westminster to do things that we know will work for us. Don't believe me. Believe the former Mayor of London, who in 2013 demanded powers that are nowhere to be seen. In this report, we asked for powers 
and we got a process. Where are the powers we were promised? Seriously, Madam Deputy Speaker, the arrogance of a Chancellor sitting in Whitehall, drawing lines on a map, choosing which of us have yeah. earned the right yeah. to have that some right. say over the decisions that affect not their lives, our lives, our families and our communities. He talks about London-style regeneration. My colleagues in London will talk proudly about the London that they call home, but not every part of this country, Secretary of State, wants to be the same. We have our, our own identities. We're proud of our own places. We believe in our communities. We believe in our people. And we deserve a government that backs us, not this smoke and mirrors right. that we've been handed today. Right. They have given more to fraudsters than they've given to the north of England. For every £13 they've taken from us, they've given us one pound back. We get a partial refund and they expect us to be grateful. Well, I'll give you an example of this. The Mayor of Greater Manchester today raised broken promises on rail and he was told by one of their MPs, don't bite the hand that feeds you. <laughs> Madam Deputy Speaker, it's not their money, it's ours. Imagine what we could achieve if we had a government with an ambition for Britain that matched the ambition of the people in it. We could build good jobs in every community. There's a global race to create these jobs and we will bring them here so that young people in our coastal and industrial towns can power us through the next generation like their parents and grandparents powered us through the last. In every community in this country, people know we can do so much better than this. Well-paid jobs, money back in people's pockets to genuinely transform our high streets, reform business rates to back our bricks and mortar businesses, buying, making and selling more in Britain, and an education recovery plan that stands as a testament to our commitment to the young people who make this country what it is. That is our mission, Madam Deputy Speaker, and today we've learnt one crucial thing. For all the spin and all the gloss, they won't do it because they don't believe in this country. So yeah, we will. Yeah.